we are diving right into Ship Showdown 2022. Very exciting stuff. And let's talk about how Phase 1 and Phase 2 uh, basically intersect. There is this system of social media type posts that you then put on Spectrum that are upvoted by members of the community uh, for support of different ships. It can be something like Legos, it can be videos, it can be songs, I think they said even. They had a few. I didn't see any, but it's kind of awkward uh, on Spectrum. Basically, you have random ones post in front of you, and you hope that you find the ships that you want. One of the interesting things this year was the Sabre Raven was attempted to get pushed up into the top 16 to be brought into Phase 2, which we're now going into. Uh, the Saber Raven uh, lost a lot of its momentum once uh, the community rep Zylo uh, came out and said, look, we are not going to be able to offer the Saber Raven in any form for sale. Uh, so that basically took a lot of steam out of the sales of the Saber Raven. This was the, you might not even have heard of it, it is a type of Saber that was built to be like the ultimate stealthy type uh, ship. And I have a policy, I don't speak about it, because my thoughts are, if it's not available for sale in-game, it's not available for sale at all at any point in the store, then it doesn't exist. There was a whole bunch that were given away as part of a real purchase of these Intel Optane-type switchable SSD systems uh, that, like, ready to cash uh, like a bigger cash for your for your storage and the idea was that at some point this could help you in a game like star citizen it's very cash heavy uh, uh to, to load up assets and such uh but it, it's not for everyone and at the time i didn't really have the chance to buy one i later found out that some people were even selling the 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 code on its own uh so i could have got one on ebay for like five dollars not that i'm advocating for gray uh market or codes of any type from different places but you know shoulda coulda would us so let's dive right into the phase two which is really the main event while you're here so there is 16 ships they are voted on each day to like a head-to-head -head type vote and if you're any kind of account uh, any kind of backer uh you can just log in on the website and the link is below to the ship showdown page go ahead right there and vote for the ship you want even if you hear my opinions in this video and you don't agree you vote for who you want to vote for <laughs> and obviously check your hanger on your my hanger section of the website and see which ships you might already have or you have ccus to more on that in a little bit but let's dive right into the list you have the first up which is going to be the redeemer versus the gladius what a powerful combination. I think the Redeemer is going to make it through. However, I think the Gladius is going to have a very strong showing. It was a ship that has had multiple passes, whether you call them golden passes or not, really doesn't matter. It's a very polished ship. It's a hero ship in Squadron 42. It's your first ship, uh, at least based on rumors, uh, if that's holding true still. And it has a weapon locker. It has all sorts of uh, all, all the HUD systems when you hold down F and you look at your personal inner thought systems really work well with that cockpit. And it's very well polished. But at the end of the day, it is still just a light fighter. And it may be a good light fighter, but it's a light fighter. The Redeemer is something I have people, myself included, have a lot of memories in. The multi-ship combat ideas, even just flying around with two, two, you know, one or two of your friends, you really have a blast in that thing. And those turrets really bring the pain. They're heck of good fun in PVM, uh, <laughs> PVM, PVE, and also I would argue PVP to a lesser extent because the turrets were nerfed a little bit, but it is very tanky. It's a good ship. It's got food. It's got beds built in, which obviously the Gladius does not have an interior. I think the Redeemer is going to pull ahead here. It could also use a paint. The Gladius has a few different paints, most notably the most rarest one, the Pirate Gladius, which is a variant that has the paint. And they've been dropping hints that uh, hopefully at some point, the Pirate Talk Like a Pirate Day, hopefully they'll have a transferable version of that paint. I think that would be more of the Gladius's speed. The Redeemer moving ahead would be a great step forward. If you don't already know this, uh, Ship Showdown, the four finalists get a paint. To me, the winners of the ship showdown are the ships that get the paints. It doesn't matter to me who's the champion. Don't get me wrong, it's really cool. Uh, but that's how it is. Also, the, f the final four lately, as of last year, were getting jackets and backpacks that matched the uh, paint for the ship. All free, as long as you own the ship by that point. 
and I guess I might as well bring a cat out of the bag here. If you activate a CCU, as soon as you see your semi-finalists are hitting, you will be able to get the the prizes, so uh, the freebies. So if you have, let's say, a Redeemer CCO and you activate it, when you see it hit the semifinals, that will be a wise decision because you'll get a free 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 items as well. Um, it's not the end of the world. You know, we're talking about some small things, but it is a nice token, and it will be something that's limited uh, to just the owners of the ship at that point in that year. Uh, if you decide to melt the ship, you can. Uh, if it's separated from the ship, you'll see how they're in different packages. Um, I have a few from last year. I'll probably put that up in another video as we get closer to the semifinals, kind of dealing with the, with the prizes. And maybe uh, I'll do an in-game video as well, showing the type of jackets and backpacks and stuff that were really cool. And we probably will see again this year, hopefully something like that. Okay, on to day two. So you have the Scorpius versus the Vanguard Warden. The Scorpius is a monster of a ship. It's got that rotatable turret that can move from the remote turret from the bottom of the ship to the top and vice versa. It, so it basically can do ground attack. It can do support slash offense. I would argue it's best maybe in a combo of another Scorpius or another ship with it, but it's still a dang good ship and it's a great PvP boat uh, versus the Vanguard Warden. An incredible, incredible ship mainly because of its vanguard heritage i think the warden is one of those ships that's kind of a standby ship that a lot of people enjoy um is it going to take the scorpius i'm not sure i think the issue for the vanguard series is that the audience is kind of split up if you think of the warden that's the box standard vanguard so it's the most popular i think um I'd love to see the number CIG has, by the way, of ship counts and other things like that. It'd be really cool to see the stats. But uh, it's one of the ships that I think is popular of the Vanguards. However, for example, I'm a I'm not very partial to the Warden. I like it, but I have the Sentinel and I have a buck kit for the Harbinger. I would love to see the Vanguard sent Sentinel up there or the uh, the Harbinger, uh, the torpedo boat and the E War boat. The Sentinel being the E War boat, um, be really cool. Uh, it is worth mentioning that most of the time with these paints, it's usually cross chassis compatible. So if the Vanguard Warden does get its paint, it can probably be used. If you own that ship, you can probably use it on other Vanguards. So it'll be interesting to see if that holds true here and who gets distributed the paints. But uh, once again, I'm not very partial to it. I would say the Scorpius is going to take the cake here. It's the new uh, hurricane, basically. Uh, dare I said it. Uh, if you have two players and you want to do a lot of pain, the Scorpius is the new cool one. It also looks like an X-Wing. It would be interesting to see what they do with a best in show paint if it makes it the semifinals. Not that I'm rooting for it, but I, I think the Scorpius would, was going to win out here, despite the fact I really like the Vanguards, the heavy fighters, that they that they really are the true heavy fighters. And uh, all that, that entails along with an in, inside space with beds and such. Uh, 600i Explorer versus Terrapin on day three. This is an interesting one. I want to see the Explorer move ahead. However, I do not believe it's going to win against the mighty little Terrapin. The Terrapin has meme potential uh, based on a cartoon that was the little Terrapin cartoon that was used on uh, the R Star Citizen Reddit. Shout out to you guys. Uh, and I really enjoy that meme as well. I thought some of the stories are quite fun to see it on adventures. It's a very weak ship, but it's the bloody ship that could. It's very armored. It's a lot like a turtle, uh, which is understandable, hence Terrapin. And I think the 600i series had a winner last year, so I can't help but think that people are going to kind of look the other way on it. That being said, the 600i Explorer audience is kind of concierge level. They are subscribers. They're going to be more invested for the most part uh the, the kind of folks running around with one of those has some has a little bit of a fleet or this is their crown jewel and they especially if they're newer they will probably push for it i think it's gonna have a strong showing but i think the terrapin's gonna win out on day four the carrick versus the 400i carrick by a mile however i think the 400i is a looker and it is something in the future that will start gaining ground as more and more people buy the 400i. I think it's one of those sleeper ships. It's a beautiful ship. It's got the lighting passes where you can adjust the light in the ship and kind of have mood lighting where it's, it's you know, full task lighting versus uh, relaxed. 
I think the Carrick is a standby ship, though. So many people have it. It is such a powerful ship. I can't wait to see a paint in it if it makes it. Um, that being said, uh, 400i also has some incredible paints, but it would be cool to see them have a best in show paint. I'm not rooting for the Carrick, but I think it's going to win. On to day five, you have the Cuddy Black versus the Mercury. In the past, I would have said the MSR, the Mercury, the Mercury Star Runner, aka, uh, would have taken it, but I can't help but think the Cuddy Black is going to start having that clawback effect where people still are hanging on to their cutlasses. The blacks especially, blue, those type of ships. The reds are getting upgraded to Apollos, at least if you have that capability in, in your budget and your credit. But the MSR is kind of in that waiting game where there's no data running yet. Um, people have been pointing out that there isn't as much cargo as there could be. It's a little bit difficult to use with a single door, with the single ramp in the back. Uh, and there's scanning the scanning potential is not realized yet so i'd love to see the stats on how many msrs have been ccu'd or melted uh, but cuddy blacks are one of those standby ships that a lot of people still have smaller backers uh smaller fleet size backers will definitely keep their cuddy black it is a workhorse i think the cuddy black's gonna win i think there's just the sheer numbers of folks who have it and It'll both both of them would have nice paints, but I think the Cuddy Black is especially good. Uh, the ghoulish green paint on the Cuddies is just fantastic looking. I would love to see like a metallic one. Hopefully, we'll see that again if it gets further. On the day six, the Freelancer versus the Raft. I want the Raft to win this so bad. The Raft could use another paint. It is an underrated ship. It is an incredibly cool ship, and it is a valuable ship that is going to be a very important in the cargo running gameplay inside like ports and moving around in, in even the far reaches of space in like an outpost area moving cargo uh, standardized cargo unit containers around different places it can haul a reasonable amount it's got excellent interior for a small crew of two people um and it, it has like I think it's four suit lockers. So you can have like your hazmat suits and your actual combat suits or your suits for just moving around, you know, while you're kind of relaxed. Um, so it's kind of interesting to see how much potential the raft has. Um, that being said, the Freelancer is one of the first ships. The Freelancer has a massive, massive uh, uh, audience. And frustratingly, I don't know which Freelancer this is. You, uh, unlike the Vanguard, though, uh, sorry, the Vanguard Warden, I would say that the Freelancer, the, the traditional Freelancer, is probably less divided. I don't think there's that many DURs. I don't think there's that many of those. There is a decent amount of MISs, uh, Freelancer MISs. And once again, if there's cross chassis paint, it's not that big of a deal no matter what. But uh, it is interesting to see that. I would like to see the Raft win. <laughs> But I think just sheer numbers of owners of the Freelancer will outvote the Raft, unfortunately. Unless there's like an Argo Cargo style meme generation for the Raft to help it. So I guess we'll see on Spectrum, on our, our Citizen and all the Discords. I think we'll see really at that point just how strong the momentum is on kind of pushing the vote and kind of getting people excited about different things. It would be cool to see that for the Raft, but we'll see. Uh, Titan vs. Eclipse, hands down the Titan. The Avenger Titan is one of the most popular ships in the history of Star Citizen. It is a great little ship. I have had, um, I, I have said a few times that it is an excellent ship. It's just not my favorite of, of some of the starters. And um, that doesn't mean it's not good. That doesn't mean it's not dang good. Um, in the next, uh, in the next verses, you'll hear me say why I think this way. But, um, I think the Eclipse is a great ship. I would love to see a paint for it, but I think the Titan's going to win. Pisces versus Mule on the last day of round one. We have the Pisces versus Mule. I strongly believe the Pisces should win, but the Mule has had quite a ground swelling of social media push and a lot of excited people about it. A lot of people own the Mule. It is a very low access cost. However... The Pisces is a very popular ship as well. This is the only reason I pick on the Avenger at all, is that the Pisces exists. I have been a proponent for a long time 
of getting the five dollar CCU uh, USD CCU uh, from the Pi- from the Dragonfly to the Pisces a long time, and there's a very good reason. It is a cheap upgrade, and it is an LTI Pisces that actually has a jump drive. It can seat three people with proper seats uh, and everything, so you can exit and interact most safely. And it can even take a couple SCU with you, even with the people on board. And it has that single ramp. And if you're a Star Trek fan, just take one look at it, and you'll understand why it's uh, pretty cool. So should the Pisces win? Yes. Will it win? Not sure. I think the Pisces versus Mule was purposely chosen by CIG. Uh, it, it, that is a epic fight that's going to be at the end of round one, and it should drive a lot of excitement to, to round out round one very nicely. I, I'm very interested to see where it goes. I'm going to hand it to the Pisces unless we see a massive, massive get out the, you know, the push for the come out and vote for the, for the mule and you know, we'll see where that goes. I can't predict just how strong that vote's going to be. We've had years before where we've had the smallest ships like the Argo Cargo pushed to the top, uh, to the championship, uh, literally r- being crowned. Um, but man, I don't know this year. I think the Pisces is a working man and woman uh, ship that to really watch, and I would love to see it get up into the final four. It would be kind of interesting. Okay, so on to round two. We have basically an interesting pick here. If the Redeemer makes it to round two, and see, here's the all the ifs and ifs and ifs. <laughs> if the Redeemer makes it to round two, and if the Scorpius makes it to round two, which ship do I think belongs in the semifinals and which will actually make it? Well, This is a very simple equation for me. I hate to say it, but I think the Scorpius is going to make it on the X-Wing factor and the meme factor and all the cool factor alone. I think there's a lot of Scorpius owners. I think some of the Deemer owners have CCU'd out of their ship, uh, but it's still very popular. Um, And the memories that I have are not necessarily what everyone else has experienced in the Redeemer. Uh, So sentimental value, unless we all have it, is not really going to... uh, push it too far i'm going to suggest that the scorpius would make it to the semifinals as the first semifinalist on to the next lineup the terrapin if it makes it (laughs) versus the carrick this is a tough one once again uh the terrapin has a big public upswelling it is a pretty popular ship it's been around a decent bit so has the carrick though I believe the Carrick will make it to the semifinals. I think there's just too many people with Carricks that are desperate to see a paint for it. And I think that there's less people excited about the Terrapin and looking pretty hard at that CCU and realizing, hey, I, don't, I might not own one right now. I might have melted it. I might have upgraded it. To get another one so I'll get the freebies from the, from the semifinal, that would be a big ass because it's got that military tax on it. You're sitting at a pretty high price point. People with Carrick's don't really have anywhere to go with that price point. So they, they've been kind of hanging on to them. You know, a few may have been upgraded to an Odyssey. If you want to call that an upgrade, it's just kind of a side grade. They're both excellent ships. I'm not picking on either one. Uh, I, I think more people hang on to their Carrick's. I think that's a long-term investment. I think there's there's very high uh, motivation to see more paints. There's not that many paints for the Carrick. Uh, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to suggest that the Carrick makes it the semi as the second semifinalist, which would be pretty cool. Okay, on to the next lineup. I suggested the black, the cut lead, the cutlass black, and I also suggested that the <laughs> I want the rap to get there so far. But uh the freelancer. So, the cutlass black versus the freelancer. This is an epic battle of the ages. The a quote pirate ship end quote versus the quote good guy who's literally a freelancer end quote i think the black will pull out here the the furthest the cutlass black is one of those it's just too easy to work with it's much more of a manageable ship it's got all those uh doors and utility is it as polished yes actually the Cutlass series seems to be further along than the Freelancer series. The Freelancer series badly needs a, a Golden Pass. 
And I'm not saying they're bad ships. I'm, I, I, I'm very excited to see where they'll go. But I think the Cutlass Black is so useful to people because it is just a ship that works. It's not buggy. Restrooms are not necessary yet. Um, and I think when the Golden Pass hits, all the cutties will get there. Get some very, very basic restroom of some sort it might not be pleasant to see but I, <laughs> I think they'll have something i think once food is in properly and hygiene is in that's a necessity the lancer will pull ahead if somehow some way the cuddy doesn't get something uh but for now i would give it to the cuddy black so that would be my third semi-finalist okay now on to the final is of the semi-finals of the round two it is going to be the Avenger Titan, I suggested, versus the Pisces. I'm going to suggest that my mighty Pisces might get the meme boost uh, from the Mule Gang. If the Pisces wins, I believe that the folks who had their weight behind the Mule will social push the Pisces. I think that's just how they operate. That's my suspicion. I don't know. I mean, people's motivations are always going to change. But I just feel like they're going to want someone to root for. And the Pisces is such an easy uh, people ship to root for. You know, it's such an amazing little cheap vessel. The Avengers, just slightly more money. Yeah, it's not expensive. I'm not suggesting it's a, it's a champagne ship or something. But I just see it as something that is a real standby working ship. And the Titan may actually be, of course, better in combat. So let me just get that out of the way before 50 more comments go below the video about how the Avenger Titan's better. Yes, it is better in combat. I'm not disagreeing with you. But I just feel like the Pisces is a better utility ship, uh, box running vessel, good all arounder for such a cheap price that especially people that are looking to just have a just have one extra ship. If they got their referral Dragonfly for five bucks, they have a second ship. Their first ship might be an Avenger Titan. Their first ship might be something else. But the point is that the the Pisces is that perfect little, I need a second ship in case my first ship gets bugged out or bro broken and I have to wait for this respawn. At least I have that Pisces to fall back on. Or I just want to have fun and relax and not have to worry about huge refueling costs or something else. Pull out the small but mighty Pisces. I'm, I'm going to give it to the Pisces. I'm going to suggest that it pulls ahead of the Avenger Titan, and that is fighting words, I know. I think it's going to be a 51-49 fight, fight to the gills, to the last minute, and it, the Titan might pull ahead, but I just, I feel like the chance is better that the Pisces will pull ahead. And if I get all these wrong, feel free to, make, to call me out on it, but I just feel that these are, uh, these are my positions. I, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about them. Uh, so I should just final this out in the, in my finalist. I'm thinking that if the Scorpius makes it to the semifinals and it's fighting against the mighty Carrick, I believe that the Scorpius will pull ahead of the Carrick slightly because more people have Scorpiuses than Carricks. Uh, or do they? <laughs> oh man, that's a hard question. So how well did the Scorpius sell? It's a newer ship than the Carrick. The Carrick's been around for years and years. I just got done explaining how a lot of people hold on to their Carricks due to the limited CCU upgrade cost. And also it has so much value to it that, that really it already has. It, you know, regeneration on board is just such a critical factor. It's a wonderful turret configuration. If you do have a even just two friends running around back and forth. It's a really amazing ship. And if you have more, you really have a battle wagon. Um, the hangar. Uh, that can fit a Pisces, of all things. Uh, uh, that's a tough one. I think that just the sheer difference in cost, I'm going to give it to the Scorpius. I'm going to go on a whim and suggest that the Scorpius has more owners than the Carrick. Not that it deserves the finalist, right or wrong. I'm just saying, I think this is a numbers game when you get up to the finals. And for the finalist on the second final, I would suggest that of all things, our mighty, mighty Cuddy Black will be losing to the Pisces. Uh, same thing, numbers game. I believe that the Pisces is, has more owners than the Cuddy Black. I could be blatantly wrong about that. 
uh, and also the social media push and upswell by owners, and also to think about the Pisces future owners, people that are just buying it at the last minute to bandwagon on. They're going to find out about the $5 CCU for their Dragonfly. They're going to find out it's only 45 USD to buy the thing outright, even if they don't have something to purchase. I, I just feel like a lot of people are going to buy it, even just on credit, to buy it on 45 USD credit and then kick it back to buyback right afterwards once they get their freebies. So I I'm going to go with the Pisces. I think the black is going to be, Cuddy Black is going to be a harder price point to really do something like that or make those maneuvers or have the exact CCU level to be able to go. A lot of CCUs are above the 100, well, 105 USD price point. Um, that you can get the Cuddy Blacks for the most, back, most part, especially if you have one sitting in buyback. Okay, so that's kind of where my thoughts are. And <laughs> you're probably wondering, who am I going to decide on, the Scorpius or the Pisces? I'm saying the Pisces is going to take it all the way. I think this is going to be another meme year, but to a lesser extent, we're not going to have a vehicle meme where it's a ship that doesn't even have a, have a jump drive or the mule, which is just a land vehicle. I, <laughs> I, I, I'm choosing my words carefully. I don't want to get the Pitchfork Army on me, but I am going to suggest the Pisces wins the day. So as a reminder... This was kind of a free-form video, and I'm just having fun with it. But the semi-finalists are the true winners. Your final four are your winners. This is a type of game where you really need to think that way. If you walk away with a free paint and a free bunch of freebies that uh, have a ship's, uh, that have a jacket with the ship's name on the back and a logo and a backpack or some other really cool stuff, I, if I was to guess, I would suggest armor this year. I'm betting that they'd probably do an armor set. It'd be kind of cool to see that. And just so you know, the basic difference is like the jackets, for example, looked like the I sorry uh, Invicus Jump Week flight jackets with the but a circle patch on the back and on the front that had the name of the ship with a little logo of the ship. But looked really cool. And each one of the jackets was only slightly different in variation because it just had the different logos and the name of the ships. But yeah, it's still nice. Uh, if you walk away with all those freebies, you're a winner to me. It doesn't matter who the champion is to me. Uh, one of the other cool things, uh, CIG loves to do sales uh, during this time where they kick all the ships that are in the lineups to make them for sale. And then they have a semi-finalist big sale uh, towards the end. Uh, and they oftentimes will tie in free flies with these kind of events. So in just a few hours, I'm recording this just before the phase two, as they call it, where this bracket starts releasing and each day there's a vote. Um, I'm excited to see basically what they're going to do this year and be along for the ride just like the rest of you. Uh, this is going to be it for now. I think this is going to be a half hour video. Wow. I had no intention to go over a bracket for a half hour. But <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's uh, free form. Let me know what you think of this kind of video and let me know what you think of my choices. Uh, and do you think that you're going to go into a different, I would say a different direction? Um, some of these choices I made were based on what I think the numbers of ships are, what I think the popularity of a ship is. That might not be that fair. I think a lot of these ships have a lot of potential and other people might see that. And, um, potential owners, you know, especially might jump in. There's a few ships on this list that are affordable enough to kind of push a vote a certain way uh, based on potential owners. And I tried to cover that with the Pisces. I tried to cover that with the Titan, um, but uh, we'll see. As a reminder, this is just a final thing. If you're considering doing what I suggested about purchasing the ship or just having it in your credit and then flopping it to buyback, wait until it hits the semifinals. It is okay to wait even till the final semifinal to pick up the ship. The awards don't start brocking until later. So just remember that. You don't have to roll the dice and like apply a CCU you might regret later or spend money on a ship or put credit towards a ship and then go, oh, dang, it didn't even make the semifinals and then have to kind of reverse all that and or, or hit up, you know, support and hope that they'll flip a CCU back. So wait until it hits the semifinals, if you're even considering that. Okay, that'll do it for me for real this time. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Take it easy.